In 1966, 31-year-old Lynn Westmore Bloom, then known as Lynn Seamayer, was a San Fernando Valley mother of two living in Northridge, California. She was a paralegal and an artist. Lynn's mother lived in a modest house in Malibu, California, and Lynn made numerous trips to the beach community to see her. There is a tunnel that you have to travel through if you take Malibu Canyon Road to get to the beach, and Lynn grew increasingly dismayed with the graffiti on the cliff face above this tunnel. She thought it was an eyesore. A budding artist in her own right, Lynn thought, if someone was going to that trouble, why not do something creative? And Lynn was inspired to paint something high on the cliff face for all to enjoy, a bird with open wings, but dismissed the idea because the rock face would not easily accommodate the width of her design. She thought that one of her own paintings enlarged that she had at home would be the perfect thing. So she chose this more vertical subject to be the model for her 60-foot-tall work of art that she would paint on the cliff above the south end of the Malibu Tunnel. Starting in January 1966, she erected a scaffolding above the cliff face and hung from nylon ropes while erasing the graffiti and chipping away rocks and bushes until she had a surface that would accept her creation. This bold and daring endeavor leaves me mystified. Not very many people would embrace such an extraordinary feat, dangling 100 feet in the air with only moonlight to guide her, and an almost certain death if her rope craft was not certain. This solitary feat took nine months, the cold, moonlit darkness her only company, fueled by her desire to create. By August, the cliff face was ready. Lynn used a giant stencil to lightly outline her 60-foot-tall female form so as not to be visible from the roadway below. Then on Friday, October 28, 1966, with a full moon to guide her, she worked all night into the early dawn to create a pink, carefree, nude, 60-foot-tall young woman frolicking freely with black hair and a bunch of yellow lilies in her right hand. Lynn then drove home to greet her dog, who had delivered puppies overnight, and resume her normal routine. It would not remain normal for long. That morning, Saturday, Motorists traveling north on Malibu Canyon Road looked up onto the rock wall above the entrance to the tunnel and were stunned to see Lynn's creation. And by Monday, the artwork began to attract local and then national news coverage. Nobody knew who had created this guerrilla artwork, and Lynn had dressed in all black throughout this nocturnal endeavor to keep it that way. Everyone just assumed the artist was a man, given the daring task that creating this artwork presented, and Lynn was angry at this assumption, but she remained silent. After all, she didn't want to be arrested, and she had always wondered if the painting might land her in jail. Los Angeles County officials thought the artwork created a safety hazard, fearing traffic congestion and looky-loo accidents they decided it had to go. Motivated to save her creation, Lynn returned to the Malibu Road Tunnel to take ownership of her artwork and attempt to stop its destruction. She arrived to find a circus-like atmosphere. She later told a reporter, quote, When I came through the tunnel, I was greeted by the most unbelievable sight. At least four fire engines, nine sheriff's cars, four highway department cars, and at least 300 people, end quote. Officials had tried high-pressure water hoses and then paint remover to remove the painting, 
both to no avail. After Lynn's confession, officials only wanted to know what kind of paint formula she had used that had so far thwarted their efforts to remove it. Lynn stayed silent concerning the fact that she had used off-the-shelf pink exterior house paint from Sears, then left the area. Lynn sought a court injunction to halt her artwork's destruction. This failed, however, and on November the 3rd, a road crew covered the painting with brown paint. Lynn sued the county for $1 million for the destruction of her artwork, and the county countersued for $28,000 for removal costs and managing the spectacle that the artwork created. Since the painting was on private property, both cases were dismissed by the court. I'm not sure what made Lynn think her lawsuit could possibly prevail. Although her artwork is tame by today's standards, some felt it was obscene. Hate mail and death threats were directed towards her and her two children. The FBI were concerned enough by this that they tapped her phone. She received marriage proposals and photos in the mail from men in the act of arousing themselves. Nudist groups ask her to join. Hollywood asked for her story. A woman called Lynn every other night for two months, contending that the pink lady was an exact portrait of her young daughter who had run away from home. Lynn said, quote, she thought I had used her daughter as a model. It was so pathetic. She was so convinced. End quote. It was too crazy, Lynn said. One woman accused me of all the rapes that had been committed, that the pink lady brought out the lust in men. This whole circus affected Lynn's health and she was hospitalized. A nurse asked her to sign something and she thought it was regarding some medical form or a medicine. It turned out the nurse just wanted her autograph. That the painting that Lynn Seamayer brought to life has her subject holding a bunch of yellow lilies could very well be motivated by the expression of flower power. Flower power had its birth in 1965, when in November of that year, an essay was written by beat poet Allen Ginsberg titled How to Make a March Spectacle. It advocated that protesters should be provided with masses of flowers to hand out to policemen, press, politicians, and spectators. This is a famous photo from 1967 showing a protester placing a flower into the barrel of a rifle at a peace protest against the Vietnam War. Flower power was the belief that war is wrong and that people should love each other and lead peaceful lives, used especially to refer to the beliefs and culture of young people called hippies in the 1960s and 70s. So Lynn's nude painting of a young woman holding flowers suggests the flower power ideas and free love ethic of the 1960s. Hello everybody, it's October 27th, 2023. And tomorrow marks the 57th anniversary of the painting that Lynn C. Mayer created above the tunnel that's on Malibu Canyon Road. 
I'm right now on Mulholland Highway, about a mile east of Las Virginis Road. And I'm going out to video the location of Lynn Seamayer's artwork that only lasted for six days. So right now we're on Malibu Canyon Road going south toward the beach. The tunnel is coming up here shortly. The artwork that Lynn Seamayer created was not on the north side of the tunnel, it was on the other side. But you'll see the uh, tunnel as it would appear if you're going from the San Fernando Valley to the beach. And here's the tunnel right here. I'm right now about one half mile south of the tunnel. And as I approach the tunnel, you'll notice above it is a rock face, a cliff. And that rock face is where Lynn Seamayer painted her 60 foot tall pink lady. see the rock face from here. There it is in front of us. And that's the rock face upon which the painting was made. Okay, I'm right here at 10429 Reseda Boulevard. And this is the home that Lynn Westmore Bloom lived in. But then she was going by the name Lynn Seamayer. But she lived in this home in 1966 when she painted the Pink Lady of Malibu. Here we are at the Oakwood Memorial Park. the final resting place of Lynn Westmore Bloom. I went up to the office and they gave me directions And here is the final resting place of Lynn Westmore Bloom. Beloved artist, wife, mother, grandmother, and rebel, 
January 26, 1935 to January 6, 2017. And then there's an artist's palette right here. And it says creator of the Pink Lady. What a fascinating story. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time. All right, Sam. Show it to me. That is too great. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yep.